In Lexington, it's known simply as African Cemetery No. 2. It was created during the 19th century as a final resting place for African Americans in the bluegrass. To many, it's a place of the dead, but it's quite the opposite for one Kentuckian. For her, the cemetery has served as a place to keep alive the stories of African American luminaries from Kentucky's past. Her name is Yvonne Giles, and her book on the cemetery is titled, Still Voices That Speak. Everyone calls me the cemetery lady, basically because I have been working in the cemeteries uh, for the past 17 years, recording information on the headstones. Uh, this is something that had not been done, and I was just very curious about it. The cemetery that we're sitting in today is African Cemetery Number no. 2, which is the modern name for the cemetery that was established as Union Benevolent Society Number no. 2 of Colored People. It was formed in 1852 by enslaved individuals. Originally, the cemetery sat in a rural area. There was nothing around us. In 1890, when developments reached this area, most of the housing around us were for white families. There were no blacks who lived here. It would make sense if your, someone in your family died and there's a cemetery just across the street, around the corner, where would you bury them? You'd bury them in the one that's closest to you. The original mission of Union Benevolent Society was to take care of the sick, bury the dead, and help those less fortunate. It didn't say, we only gonna take care of black folks. It thought of the human, the humanity that was around them. One of the projects that we have engaged in is to not only identify everybody who has a headstone in here, but also to uncover those who don't. Robert Charles O'Hare Benjamin, RCO is how we normally see his name. He became the editor of our uh, black newspaper, the Lexington Standard, and he was a very vocal advocate for citizens' rights. He was escorting African Americans to a voting precinct in 1900. And the reason he was escorting them is because they were very fearful of going in and trying to register because it was not a welcoming atmosphere. So he escorted people there. While he was there, there was a gentleman, and I'm saying that kindly, uh, Mike Monahan, and he and RCO Benjamin had an altercation. Uh, Mike Monahan hit Mr. Benjamin and used unkind words about him. Mr. Benjamin filed an arrest warrant for him. Mr. Monaghan was arrested, but then immediately released. Mr. Benjamin, by that time, had left the boating precinct, but he found other people that he brought back that same day. When he walked into the voting precinct and saw that Mike Monaghan was back in his seat, he knew that his life was in jeopardy. So he hurriedly turned to leave the voting precinct, and as he did, Mr. Monaghan followed him out the door and shot him in the back. Every newspaper, every editor, every news writer reported what a senseless, uh, outrageous crime this was and could not understand why something had not been done. Mike Monaghan walked. It took 10 years for this community to put a headstone to Mr. Benjamin in this cemetery where he was buried. Among the groups of individuals uh, that we have been working on diligently since 2010 are those African-American men who were so critical and vital to the thoroughbred racing industry. One of the men that we know was buried here when he died in 1896, had a stellar career. That is Isaac Burns Murphy. He was the first jockey period to win three Kentucky Derbies. His record is a 44% win ratio, which has not been broken. One of the other groups that we have uncovered are our military veterans who served in the United States Civil War 
As the United States Colored Troop, this is a shield, the shape that identifies a marker of a U.S. military soldier from the United States Colored Troop and the Spanish-American War. So you can always designate, and usually they will say United States Colored Troop, give the name, their regiment, and the unit that they served in. Ancestors, I truly believe, call individuals to do this kind of work. I know they have called me. Yes, I tell their stories and all the other people who lay here in this cemetery that were their contemporaries. They are my family because we're all brothers and sisters. White, purple, green. And as my dad's always told us, we're mutts. No one is a pure anything. There are no pure Africans, there are no pure whites, there are no pure Irish, there are no pure Germans. They all intermix and married to make us who we are today. This is just one of many stories that can be heard and experienced only in Kentucky.